have double playing. Wait, so what? Oh, we have double playing. Oh, there we go. There we go. On the outside of the world, flashes of light. All you people, can't you see? Can't you see how you love the fucking all reality? <laughs> Oh, you can make it right, and that makes you larger than life. Cue dance moves. Boom, boom. Uh, happy tea. tea time. Happy tea time. <laughs> Hello. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Cheers to you guys. What are you drinking? I feel like we haven't checked in to see what the preferred tea time beverage is. I believe today we are drinking cucumber white tea from Tezo. Yep. We went the same. We went the same. Oh, it's so hot. Hot, 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 hot. Hi, Hello, everybody. everybody. Everyone's tweeting hi, Bookie. If this is your first time joining us for Tea Time, this is our weekly live video chat where we get a little book nerdy. We drink mm -hmm. some tea. Mm -hmm. And if you're on Twitter, you can tweet along uh, using the hashtag, hashtag Tea Time. Hashtag Tea Time. Hashtag or tea time. tweet at us at Epic Reads. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's been a busy couple of weeks for us. So we've been super busy. Swamped. Um... Because it's that time of year where a lot of things happen and there are a lot of events and we get to do fun things. So now tea time's turning into like a decompressor. Right? I know. It which is like I'm practically like typing on my computer all day and then Margo's like tea time. And right? then we're just like. Oh. Well, that's the thing. It, it like used to be the thing that was like the craziest thing of our week, but because of like Allegiance coming out so soon, it's definitely the like least crazy thing mm -hmm. that we've been doing lately. Because we have uh, like we had Comic Con, we were in Austin, yeah. and Allegiance coming out, and then we're going to Y'all Fest. So it's uh, guys checking back in. We with need you to make us <laughs> not go insane. <laughs> So, um, so forgive us if we <laughs> seem scatterbrained, because we are. Just, just a little. Basically. A little. Okay, so what are you guys reading this week? Tweet at us. Uh, what are you reading? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm reading this because Margo I've had been pushing this book on her. Major fields. And I don't like to read books this far out in advance. Right, because, because I forget them when the time that we have to talk about them the most. But when they're this good, I feel like it's really hard to, like, hold off. So Margot got me to get it. Oh. Um, I was in love with This was probably when we did the last cover roundup. This was my favorite. Judge, yes. Judge by a cover. Oh, I want God, to I read, read it right now. It's, it looks like a sweater. I don't know if you guys can see that detail. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. It doesn't come out until January. Um, but, oh my god, the contents inside are better than the cover. It is, <laughs> it's, it's a, like a murder mystery, um, but it's not like your typical murder mystery. It's very weird and yeah. quirky. The characters are, oh, priceless. They kind of remind me of Rushmore a little bit. Yes. Like, like a Paul Wes Anderson type yes. book. Yes. It's definitely, um, it's been, like, that, said a lot that it has a fargo s feel which that is like right on the nose totally don't you know um you betcha it's set in wisconsin and they say you betcha you betcha lot. and there's also very strange characters um <laughs> it's a lot of fun it's also i don't think i definitely don't think it's a book for everyone because there is a lot of it's pretty it's a little, it's a little graphic, graphic yeah it's and, a little graphic um, but it's good but it's good so if you're not uh, shy about those things put this on your goodreads to read right now. We're actually doing a um, Instagram photo contest with this book right yes. now, and the idea is to interpret the phrase, no one else can have you, mm -hmm. just like whatever that means to you. Ah! <laughs> so, um, and use the hashtag, no one else can have you, upload your photos, and 10 winners will win an advanced copy of this, and one winner will win a prize pack that Kathleen Hale, the author, has put together. Um, and it's all these movies and, like, old B scary movies. Yeah. It's a really good prize pack. We're actually going to detail all that more next week, but it's a good prize pack. So, you, so yeah, get on the Instagram mm -hmm. and say things that you can't uh, part with. I saw somebody mm -hmm. today did a, a picture of their Starbucks coffee. Yes. I was like, yes. I've seen somebody <laughs> hugging their dog yes. and their cat. Yeah. Somebody said, so, like, their best friend. It's yeah. Just, you can have fun with it. So, interpret it as will, at will. You know, just... Think of, like, this is a creepy, kind of quirky book, so feel free to, like, go that route as well if you want. So we're yeah. going to check in here. Let's see what else 
Um, everybody's reading. Uh, Dreamy Marie said, just finished Shatter Me. Ugh, need Unravel Me Now. Oh. No. Correction. What you need is chapter 62. Right? Yes. <laughs> also, you need to read Destroy Me. Yeah. Before. If you have an ebook, definitely. I mean, you don't have to read it before, but oh my god, Warner is one of my favorite <laughs> characters in YA ever. Um, let's see. Rack Z Gonzalez, sorry, it's weird on Hootsuite, but uh, t- says tea time and pizza. Um, yes, I please. believe we should do that sometime because I would really. I want pizza. pizza. Can you come pizza. over? Bring it What's over. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Oh, I'm a cla- I'm a cheese. I'm just, just a cheese? cheese gal. I'm a cheese uh, gal. I'm um, a Hawaiian. Although, um, in Michigan, yes, um, on the Michigan State University campus, they do a big potato pizza, mm-hmm. which is. Nice. But I've never seen anyone else. I love that. But you don't get access to it. I'm sorry, I'm from Ohio, so anytime I hear Michigan, I'm immediately like, <laughs> Anywho, uh, Rachel Ray says, <laughs> that was my grumpy cat impression. Um, the, uh, Rachel Ray says she's reading The Dollhouse Asylum by Mary Gray. Don't know Ooh. what that is, but that sounds kind of awesome. And it sounds creepy, so fitting for the holiday season. Starry Eyed Jen says, I'm drinking hot cocoa and reading Across a Star Swept Sea, which segues nicely to this week's new release. Cue the music we don't have. Boom, 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 Across a Star, God, this is the one that I have trouble saying. Yeah, I do too. Across a Star Swept Sea by Diana Peter Freund. She is the author of, this is the companion novel for, um, for Darkness, Darkness Shows the Stars. And I read this and I loved it. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful, beautiful story. I just, I love Diana's writing. She's just got this it's nice, really she takes her time with her words and her scenes and just like, she doesn't rush anything. Nothing is over. Um, I read this. I didn't read this. You can definitely. They're companions. So you, can, don't, you don't need uh, both, but uh, you probably will want both. As soon as I put this down, I wanted this. They're in the same world, but yeah. it's not the same story or characters. So, um, it's it's really good. She does have very beautiful, like well thought out writing. Yeah, it, nothing is just like thrown away. No sentence is just like half haphazardly put together. It's like she takes her time, and you can just see the thought that she puts into each sentence and like the characters that she builds out. Um, this book features one of my favorite, uh, YA couples of all time, Elliot and Kai. They're just, I just, I <laughs> just, I don't know. I don't know what to describe it, but they are one of my favorite couples of all time. So yeah, so Across a Star, Across a Star, to see. See. is, uh, new this week, hardcover and ebook, and I like to undress this one because it's got a little, got a little thing. Oh yeah, I also I like the color. The white. I like the blue and the you white. You don't see the white a lot. No, you don't. Um, Margo, you didn't. I'm looking and saying what yeah. people are saying that they're reading, and you didn't tell us what you're reading. Oh yeah, um, I picked up. This is coming out. When is this gone sale? Not till March, March 18th. So I'm reading this way in advance, but I sort of just decided I couldn't wait anymore. So um, I'm reading Side Effects May Vary by Julie Murphy, who's a Twitter friend of mine. Hello, hello, Julie. Um, Julie is like kind of the nicest person I've yeah, ever met. Yeah, we met her at Austin. And, yeah, she's just like infectious. Yes. She's, she's one of those people that would be like, oh, be friends with me, you're so cool. And you meet them and you feel like you've known her for like yes. ever. Just immediately she just like gets you. I'm like, you're my person. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I want to like dedicate an entire Tea Time episode later on, um, like closer to, to when this goes on sale, to cancer in YA books um but so I won't go into too much detail about this book but I am reading it right now um and it's very very good and there is cancer in this but I wouldn't call it I wouldn't classify it as a cancer book because the focus isn't the cancer Cancer, yeah the focus is on the characters and the story and not so much that she has leukemia and is dying I Um, think that will make a very good tea time and I'll also weep so. Yes, uh, be prepared for lots of weeping. So From both of us. <laughs> we'll wait until after, let's see, probably, I don't know when we'll do this, maybe either in between the holidays when we're all like stressed out over family time anyway, so all the emotions are running high and we'll just have a big cry fest. Okay. So in between now... Mark your cry fest right now. <laughs> so in between now and then, my goal is to, because I like this book so much, I kind of just want to read, um, everybody's been telling me that like, 
John Green, you know, comparison stuff. So in between now and then, my goal is to read as much. I hate calling it this. I hate it, but cichlid. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, you gotta come up with a better name. That's what the industry is calling it, but I'm... Ugh, I don't like that. I don't like it It sounds either. wrong and just not reflective of these types. I wouldn't even call them types. These stories that happen yeah. to have cancer in them. Yeah. So, anyway... So that's my goal is to read as many. So I am going to read The Fall in Our Stars. I haven't read it yet. She's afraid of it. I am afraid of it. And I'm not helping her fear. I'm, I'm really like, afraid oh, of no. it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. You feel. I'm super scared. <laughs> so that's feel? why I feel like if we set a date for our cry fest tea time, then I'm just like going to have to like, we'll do all it. right, we'll just do it. We'll do it. I don't feel like I've had a proper cry cry over the fall in our stars we'll make sure to wear extra not waterproof mascara so it'll be, <clears throat> it'll be fun <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so yeah so that's what i'm reading um so what did you do this week last week last weekend yeah we went to comic con and we had a good time <laughs> um there's two things up on the interwebs one i'm gonna tweet them out right now is this video we decided to uh you want to tell them about our trivia time? Yeah. So we went to Comic-Con because we go to a lot of festivals that are book-specific. But Comic-Con is not book-specific. So we decided to t- test out the knowledge of the uh, other nerds in the world <laughs> to see how much they know about the things that make us geek out. Um, the results were hilarious. Yes. Um, and proof that we still have a lot of work to do mm-hmm. in taking over the world with YA. <laughs> I was impressed by the... I don't know what I was expecting when I went into that, but I was surprised that people knew as much as they did, but I was also surprised that they, they didn't, didn't know yes. as much as they did. Yes. And But they're hungry for it, and they yes. want the stories. Yeah. It's just we have to educate them. I think everybody, it seemed, obviously knows of Harry Potter, Twilight, and the Hunger Games, yes. and that was sort of like a common theme. Any question we had about those, they knew the answers to. Everything else they didn't. Everything else. So it was kind of an exciting time to, like, introduce them be like mm-hmm. oh so you watched the hunger games and you read them and you really liked them oh you should probably read x y and z or oh you like twilight oh you should read x y and z so it was a lot of fun being like guess what oh, oh. oh t fail there's a lot of there's a whole genre like oh. these books aren't the only awesome things out right now oh. look at all of uh, awesome she just cleaned up her pants with a pillow yeah whatever i had to make do okay <laughs> <laughs> um I was also surprised at how um, nobody could... It was very difficult for people to name all Harry Potter books in a row at, like... But I think it's just there's so much going on. We asked them on the spot, like, name them. Here's the thing. That's hard. You guys try to do it right now and Uh keep track of how many you've said out loud because the titles are so long. It's hard keeping track of the ones you said unless you are a super Harry Potter fan and know the exact order just rattled off right off the top of your brain. Mm -hmm. We had a hard time keep keeping track, so I feel mm-hmm. like unless, unless you're writing it out, because mm-hmm. I could write them out and get them, but like speaking them out is Plus, hard. I think a lot of the time people got tripped up because the move, the last book was split into two movies, and I think that messed people up a little bit, because yeah. they were like trying to think like, okay, what comes after the Deathly Hallows? Like, I can't remember, and they're like, oh wait, they just split up the last movie, the last yeah. book into two movies, so. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, no, you got him. You got him. <laughs> Uh, so we just tweeted out a link to that video, but we also, um, so that was on Friday, and then on Saturday, we, um, we brought a little whiteboard. Why don't you tell them while I tweet this? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we brought a whiteboard and we just asked cosplayers what their favorite books were, which was really fun, um, because I like knowing what people's favorite books are. Um, I think it tells a lot about a person. I agree. Especially, it was just funny to see them dress up in their costume yes. and then, like, what they wrote as their so favorite So the book. first person on the list is the first person we asked. Mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as he wrote his answer and turned around the board, Margo and I looked at each other we're like, and we're like, yes. yes. Like, this is going to be so good I'm, because that's not what I would have expected your answer to be. I'm not sure what his costume was. I just tweeted out the, the link. Um, he's the very first photo. I'm not sure what his costume was, but he wrote the Kite Runner. And it was just like... Yes. Because yes. I kind of was expecting, like, oh, well, they're all going to write nothing but comic books. I was actually mm-hmm. mostly expecting a lot of Game of Thrones, and, like, that was it. We got a lot of Harry Potter. We got a lot of Harry Potter. We got one Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. The guy mm-hmm. dressed as um, Captain Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly, Firefly. <laughs> um, said, said Game of Thrones. We had, 
surprisingly only one 1984. <laughs> I thought there was going to be more of that too for some reason. Um, the the Twit. Somebody said the Twit. Yes. From, by Roald Dahl, which was awesome because I completely forgot that book even existed. So uh, yeah, that was kind of awesome. So I kind of want to do this like again, like not necessarily like just wherever we go. Like, next time I go home to Cincinnati, I just want to, like, go around the streets of Cincinnati and just be like, yo, Cincinnati, what's up? What are your favorite books? And just, like, see if, It's really telling, and it's a really great photo series. Mm -hmm. Um, So, So, look for more. Look for more. Maybe we'll do it in Charleston. We should also do more YA trivia. But we should have, like, we should have really good questions. Oh, my favorite answer for the the trivia video, it's in the video. Uh, We asked, what is a Mogadorian? And I am number four reader, so you guys know what a Mogadorian is. Um, but this guy, he said, that's what you call a guy with a mohawk who drives a DeLorean. And it was like the greatest moment of my life. It was like, oh God, it was really, really So good. happy we got that on camera. <laughs> oh man. Um, it was a lot of fun. And if you guys get a chance to go to Comic-Con, I would say definitely do it. Mm-hmm. Um, because they may not be YA fans yet, but they're just... Fans. But they're pop culture fans. They're fans, and mm-hmm. like their energy is infectious, and everyone is kind, and yeah. everyone loves things, and they don't judge you for the thing that you love if you don't judge them for the thing they love. And it's a beautiful space. It kind of stinks, but it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you just get free stuff. If you had come by the HarperCollins booth on Saturday at 10 a.m., you would have gotten a lot of free yeah. Divergent we stuff. We nuzzled up with some... Four standees. <laughs> some cardboard four interests. Yeah, we got some cardboard four action. Hey, I'll take it. Yep. You know, whatever gets um, me closer to Theo. There was a Divergent Takeover, which was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. We got to chat with a lot of people. There was, we did the wheel, our fun little wheel. We gave away some stuff. So, yeah, um, Comic-Con is fun. I like to go to those stuff mostly for their free stuff. <laughs> That's just me. Um, um. Let's see. Oh, mostly YA Lit says, can you guys do classic YA trivia like Madeline Langle? Yeah. Yeah, but I would fail it, so I need to study first. Have you read A Wrinkle in Time? No. You should. It's amazing. Um, I would have to remember, I don't know if people remember who have watched, but I was um, raised very oh, religious. Right. And I oh, was not then allowed. you would, yeah, you would definitely not have been allowed to read I was that. not allowed a lot of access to a lot of things outside of the Chronicles of Narnia and the Bible. You should definitely read A Wrinkle in Time. It's probably my all-time favorite sci-fi. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Meg Murray. I think Meg Murray and, oh crap, what's his name? Cal. I think it's Calvin. Cal. Correct me if I'm wrong. They were, I think, I, honest to God, I think that that, that was the first couple I ever shipped without knowing what shipping be- was. <laughs> I remember reading it and being like, ooh, <laughs> I like it when they're together. <laughs> <laughs> they make me they make me smile. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh, people are mad at me about a wrinkle of time. I'm sorry. Don't, I will read it. Hey, guys, no hating. No hating. I will right? read it. I will read it. I promise. Um, we all know what I haven't read, so mm-hmm. we're not going to bring that up, though. <laughs> Because I'm going to read it over Thanksgiving. It's all set. It's all set. It's all set. Okay. Um, so do you want to do some covers? Oh, yeah. So um, last week, among the craziness of Comic-Con and everything, and this week, we've been debuting all of the spring. The covers have been raining oh, down from the heavens. And they have been awesome. I'm yes. going to tweet out the link. Um, there, we've got all of them, except for four. We're going to debut four here. Uh, here we go. We can, you can see all the covers here. Look at this. Margo's just like a tweeting machine right now, <laughs> giving you everything Never. you want. There we go. Um, so we, there's a handy roundup of all of the Harper covers that have been revealed thus far. Thus far. There's a lot of pretty. There's happy. a lot coming your way. Get ready to... <laughs> we're not going to show you all of them because that would take forever. Plus, don't worry, we're going to go into detail about all of them, assuming... All of them. I don't know. We don't know what we're getting for our ARC party, but the ARC party will be happening probably in November. November. If the timing right of has been working out with the catalog, mm-hmm. we usually get our ARCs like a month after. Yeah. So probably either the week before Thanksgiving or the week after Thanksgiving will be the ARC party, depending on So we're just going to do straight up cover love. Yeah. We're so, not going to talk about the contents. Well, first, we want to show you, there's this cool thing that we sometimes get. I don't know what they're called. Um, so if any of our Harper people are watching and know what these are called, 
But so they're just the jackets. They're like, it's like a proof of the jacket, which is really cool. Um, this one is Say What You Will by Cami McGovern. And so this is like what it will look like when it's in the hardcover. And here's the back, which That's is pretty really cool. cute. I Isn't like that cool? This. I think I, I like getting these because... Up and like without them, I only see like what we post online. Yeah. And a lot of the time, what we post online, almost like you don't get the full effect of like what it actually looks like. So, yeah. for example, if you go to that blog post we just tweeted out, um, there's this cover Tease by Amanda Maciel. Um, it looks gray and just sort of like gray and pink. It's a cool cover. It looks yeah. cool online. And then you see the actual thing. <gasps> Boom! Shiny! Look at that, a mirror. It's it's like a freaking mirror. Um, and then this is, well, oh, it's not texturized, but it looks more like it's lipstick. Right? Vandalized on it, which I didn't get from the digital copy. Exactly, and I would have had no idea that it was, like, ref, like so unbelievably shiny. I mean, how good is that going to look on your bookshelf? It's going to look real good. Like, if you are, this is the book that you want to bring with you on a deserted island to signal for help because it's so shiny. <laughs> Like practicalities. S. Oh, pragmatism S. from Margo. <laughs> hey, my mind just goes there, right? Um, so specs. That's what I guess they're called. Specs. Specs. We get lessons in um, professional words all the time, and specs and is one of them. So I guess that's like the type of paper, and like whether it's going to be texturized or embossed. Um, so all of that plays a part. There's like what you see like, online isn't what it actually is in real no. life. I mean, just like this, like the depth of this color is shown in real life, but not so much in the, the digital it's version. Embossed. It's embossed. embossed. It feels so nice. Um, have you guys seen this? It's Amy Plum's new series, After the End. Did you, have you guys, are you guys a big fan of uh, Die For Me? Mm -hmm. She's the author of the Die For Me series. Isn't that cool? There's um, a doggy. I love doggies. Look at that doggy. And this one, when I saw it, just made me have the feels because... This is a new standalone from oh. um, the author that made me feel the most feelings in a really long time. Jodi Lynn Anderson, who you wrote Tiger Lily. Lily. You know we, we love gush. her. We gush so much about Tiger Lily, but it is so... And if you haven't read this yet, it's your own fault, and you should be sad. And the thing about Tiger Lily that makes it so unbelievably wonderful is Jodi's right. writing. Yes. Like, her writing style is just so lovely. So another book from Jodi, and I'm like, Yes, please. And again, this is another one where these butterflies are shiny and embossed and uh, uh, beautiful. And this is something that is very nice. What do you think it means? I don't know. There's like, there's, there's so much. Moths? Yeah, those aren't butterflies. Those are moths. moths. And these two heads coming up. Two there's girl two heads. heads coming up. And then there's like snowflakes. So maybe it takes place in winter. Yeah. I mean, I've girls seen. started vanishing in the fall, and now winter's come to lay a white sheet over the horror. Oh my god! Winter is it. coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> I want it so bad, I can't even take it. Um, well, uh, <laughs> Jodi Lynn Anderson's one of those authors we haven't met yet, and I, I don't think that I can. I, I don't. I don't I know. Think if she she might, would she'd probably get be it. overwhelmed by us. I would probably, just be like Jodi. I would probably just hug her My and precious. <laughs> I'd get all smeagle on her. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh man, she's a special. She's probably somebody that I don't want to meet in real life because I think she has a special place in my heart that I want to keep it in my heart. That sounds really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> uh, Matt Crazy says, "Just got Tiger Lily from the library today. Preparing for the feels. Can't oh, wait." Oh, Matt. Oh gosh. God, I love this book so much. It's so good. Okay. Um, let's see. I just like the cover. Um, Chris Ten Williams says, All these great people title are tweeting and cover. At us, uh, saying that you haven't read Tiger Lily yet. Do it! <laughs> it's in paperback now. It's in paperback? It's at your library? I don't, know, I don't know what else I can do to make you. I don't know. Do it. <laughs> oh, I'm so pumped for this. I, I kind of got a little teary eyed about it. I'm excited about it. Every time people tweet at us and they're like, like I'm reading Tiger Lily. I'm just like, okay. I know. Well, we'll save it for the cry fest. We'll save it for the cry fest. I mean, um, that's not. We should just have a cry fest one, and all the books that make us cry <laughs> and talk about it. Uh, so we have four new covers to debut. Um, 
that are not on that blog post. So, and I don't I believe any. Seen I don't think anybody is like this is the first them, time. So this could be the first time you see them. Um, we don't know. There's two th- two books that we sort of know because we've read their first books, yes. but there's two that we don't know anything about. So it's kind of exciting. So we're gonna try to decode what they are just based on the cover alone. So first up is Talker 25 by Joshua McCune. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here, let's get a close-up of what do you guys think it means. So, um, I see wings and wings. rust. That's okay. the first thing I see. Rust, like a spaceship. Okay, so you think spaceship? At first, when I saw the wings, what well, the tagline is: "Listen, contact, destroy." Yeah, I think, okay. I so, you think, space. so you think you think space? I when space. I first saw this, just based on like the wings and stuff and the number, I immediately went to sports. Oh, I went to like basketball. Maybe because the wings reminded me of Nike, mm. and then the number twenty-five. I don't know. If it was 23, I'd be like, Michael Jordan! Um, but <laughs> It's a book about Michael Jordan in space! But look at... What's space called? Jam. Space <laughs> Jam. Oh my god. What if it's a wide version of Space Jam? <laughs> that would be so awesome. That would be so awesome. If it's not that, somebody please write it. Oh yeah. my god. Space write it. Space Jam is my favorite. <laughs> Whew, sorry, 90s flashback. Um, okay. But because there's something going on here, it looks like a little serpent. Oh yeah! Look, it's like a little serpenty thing. Yeah. Like a see, I didn't even notice that in the first dragon serpent. What do you guys think? What do you guys think the first? What are your first reactions to seeing this? Also, mm-hmm. these will be posted on that roundup, and we'll right have after. description of the book. Mm-hmm. Scroll. Uh, oh, is it about an angel athlete? See, angels. So, okay, yeah. athletes. Um, Leps 1824 said Talker 25, clearly a companion to the Top Gun movie. Um, yeah. Favoriting that I'd read one. that too. <laughs> I hope it's all about Goose. Goose. Wait, can we do the Top five win- or top Gun Windmill high five? I don't know. Remember what you remember? There you go. <laughs> um, I helped my friend karaoke to uh, his fiance in the bar. <laughs> nice. Uh, the night before his wedding to, um... You never close your eyes when we... What's that song? What's the song that he karaoke's in Top Gun? So I Twitter, remember. tell me. Uh, Heather Self says, makes me think of Code Talkers from World War II. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Starry Eyed Jen says, I thought Shipbreaker when I saw that cover for talk or for uh, Talker 25. Yeah, Shipbreaker, because of all the rust. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess it does kind of look at the hull of a ship, right? A Love of Books says, Talker 25 set, looks military-ish to me. Mm-hmm. Y.A. Reed says, I thought of motorcycles. This is fun, right? I, I, like, I like saying this. what everybody thinks uh, the, the book is about. Um, Do you want to pull up what the book is about and read it? Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> We're on the fly. We're scatterbrained. Entertain them while I bring it up. Entertain them without singing. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what to do other than be awkward. <laughs> Talk about Space Jam. Um, <laughs> who's your favorite dream from the dream team? Michael Jordan? Yeah, not Larry Bird. Oh, Scotty Pippen! Scotty Pippen! Um, okay. Penny Hardaway. Was he on the dream team? I like that he had a puppet. I don't think so. Okay, we're just going to read the quick blurb. Um, debut author Joshua McCune's yes. gritty and heart-pounding novels, a masterful reimagining of popular dragon <gasps> fantasy set in a militant future <gasps> reminiscent of Shipbreaker. <gasps> Holy crap. Somehow. We nailed it all Between it. all of you guys, we... St- we pretty much came up with the uh, the plot there, so well done. So what we know is it sounds <laughs> awesome. So it's dragons, sort of like shipbreaker, and it's military. military. There you Hell go. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sweet sauce. Okay, so that was <laughs> one. Now let's start with the. Uh, let's go with this one. Okay. Meridian. Mm. By Joe and Al McQueen. Now this, I'm excited for because the sequel, like it looks pretty on this printed paper, but the first one, ArcLight, is super so good. shiny. It's They're like definitely a, gonna have those. It's gonna have the shiny. It's gonna, it's gonna have the shinies. Yes. Um, I'm really because this one, ArcLight, is all about like where the lights go out and then, like. 
basically there's like this city that's domed in light because if you go outside of the light yeah. in the darkness there are these creatures that will kill you so it's all dark so I'm wondering what's, what's the light all going about? on in the light version uh -oh. so I'm curious to see what that is going to um this the next one I'm super excited about um more so because oh, yeah. the title just makes me have the feels ready in the end, which is the companion or sequel to In, in the, the After. after. Um, in the After looks like pavement. Looks like, see, there's the road. Yeah. The line marker. So this is the uh, probably one of my favorite books last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, is it, did it come out last year? No, it came out in May. came out in May. It, God, this year. Alien so, Invasions. Alien Invasions. Um. Probably one of my so, favorite yeah. relationships, non-romantic relationships between Womance. Well, womance. <laughs> Even femship. though she's femship. Femship. Even though she's very Bromance. Young. It's like a sisterly. It is. Sisterly romance. Um so Wait. I'm really excited. Ugh. Friendship. <laughs> Sorry. Friendship. Scatterbrain. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> um so the thing that strikes me the most about this is the title. In the, the end. end, I'm like, I don't want, the end makes me scared well, and sad. I'm interested because the first one was The Road, and I don't know if they just chose this just because it's like, is a cool background, but this one looks more like a wall to me, so it makes me yeah. think that, um, I mean, I don't want to give anything away. Yeah, the first it's hard to like. But maybe there's something having to do with like walls or in a, like a walled spaces. city. Yeah. yeah, so like walls mean, you know, lots of you things. Know. Um... So, what do you guys think? I don't, I just want this. I just, I mean, I just want to read it. I loved In the After. Also, first hundred pages of In the After are easily my favorite hundred pages of any book this year. Yeah, that's a good thing. Like, just consecutive hundred pages. It's good stuff. I feel like people can have favorite pages. So this is also Weeds. And this is Ivy, which I, Ivy, Ivy, Ivy is seems like, to have more life to me than a weed. Well, situation. Ivy also just like it grows Overtakes. anywhere, yeah, yeah, and it just like consumes you. No one else can have you. No one That's else. That's what the Ivy's saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and let's see, what is our fourth, Fine. our final one? The things you kiss goodbye by Leslie Connor. Oh, um, cute. Yes. It reminds me of Lauren Barn Lauren Barnholtz's books, if anybody's read, like, yes. Two-Way Street. Also, I swear to you, this could be a picture of my best friend in high school. She had this red truck and this... The long French braid. Oh, yeah. And she was, like, gorgeous. She was our prom queen. She was our homecoming queen. She was, like, the sweetest girl ever. So this totally makes me think of home. This also kind of reminds me of, um... Oh, poo. What is that book? <laughs> Something happy. Something happy. And there's yellow happy. Oh, what's it called? Somebody happy. Tell me. Um, but yeah, so somebody, let's see. Who just wrote that? Uh, Jamie at Broken Bookish says, ooh, contemporary. Maybe country setting? Please. I think with the truck and the French braid and the... Yes, that I would mean, be cool. Country this setting. looks like my home. Outside of the fact that and I grew up in the country of Florida, which exists... <laughs> So there aren't mountains and there's just flatlands, but this, it's got to be country. Um, somebody just, rem uh, Nick Litt said, this, this is, is what, what happy, happy looks like. like. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, so where do you guys think that takes place? North Carolina. You're guessing North Carolina? I'm guessing at Carolina. You're guessing at Carolina. I'm going to guess because it's more rolling hills and no mountains. Yeah. I'm going to go with... Like, either one of the Dakotas or, like, Montana, maybe. maybe. Should we look it up? Maybe yeah. it'll say. Maybe okay. it'll say. Do you guys need me to entertain you again? Yes. Do, 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 uh, where else, where do you guys think it takes place? Yeah, tweet your, um, what your thoughts are. Okay. Like, who was it, Connor? Uh, let's see. First, we'll check and see where everybody else thinks it takes place. Um... Book which Jen says Southern Illinois. Okay, so we've got a no, north. Said, it's flat. I think oh. she's talking to somebody else. Oh, okay. Um, so Bridget DTF said Nebraska. So she, we've got a, a, a Nebraska guess. Dead Toss Wave is guessing Tennessee. Cupcake Girly just says Midwest. Yes. We'll accept that answer. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, author Madison says Kansas. 
And um, Scott reads it, says, the girl looks Amish? No, she's not Amish. She's by a car, dude. <laughs> yeah. The Amish yeah, don't have cars. Yeah. It would be a buggy. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, so we've got a couple of guesses here. Let's take a look. Dun, 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 dun. Does it say we're Contemporary right? teen is romantic, gritty, and heartbreaking on, story that falls in love with the twin and navigate a difficult relationship of a high school basketball star. Oh, yeah. Why don't you read it, read it more like out loud? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this romantic and gritty and heartbreaking story of a high school girl who falls in love with a 23-year-old guy while attempting to navigate a difficult relationship with a high school basketball star. I'm snuggling you. Oh, and there's a lot of cowboy talk. This could be... But there's no mention of where high school said. story. No. Oh, I want to know where it's set. Okay. You're going to have to read the book, guys. Leslie Connor is on Facebook, so we will try to find out where this book is set. If anybody knows, please tell us. Yeah. Um, okay. So these are the four covers that are new. Um, so did everybody go check out all of the upcoming, the spring cover reveals? Go take a look, and then on that one that we just tweeted out, and tell us which one of all of those, I haven't counted them up, but there's a lot, which one is your favorite. favorite. Which one get, makes you have the biggest <laughs> case of the grab me? Hands? Which one goes to the top of your Goodreads TBR? Um, so tell us. Okay, and we po we picked ours. Okay. Here, let me tweet out one more time the cover reveal roundup. Just so you can see it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag tea time. Hashtag. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so go take a look. Tell us what your favorite from uh, that blog post. From that blog post. Yeah. And what we have one that oh, we I both look, really. I enjoy. looked at in book butterfly. Just says pretty, pretty, pretty covers. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty covers. Um, <laughs> they are pretty. <coughs> Let's see. Rachel Ray says the one. That is her pick. Yes. Okay. That one's beautiful. Um, bookish thing says definitely talker twenty five. I mean dragons. dragons. Yes. Bridget DTF said, Dorothy Must Die was my favorite. Oh, which reminds me, we got to read the first four chapters at Comic-Con. <laughs> yes. I am obsessed with this world that, ooh, that Danielle Page has written. Like, okay, so she lands in, obviously she goes to Oz. Okay, not a spoiler. Um, but it's instead so of being this, like, magical, pretty world, it's, like, this world that's got, like, blue... Like dust, there, and there's like floating everywhere. So everything's got this bluish hue, and there's just like this right next to where she lands. There's just like a pit of <laughs> death, and the yellow brick road goes like right to the pit, and then just, just falls off. off. And that's like, and then end of four chapters, and you're just like, oh, it's so good, guys. <laughs> it, I had really high expectations. They were so high that I was afraid oh, to read God. the thing, but now they're even higher. Oh, big time, big so, time. So get on it. Uh, Nikki Ash 620 said, Death Sworn is her favorite cover. Awesome. Um, Ms. Reads YA says, uh, Don't You Forget About Me or The Vanishing Season, season which yeah. we just showed you guys earlier. Um, Shailene Sherry says, um, After the End by Amy Plum. So uh, there's one cover that we both really liked. Yes. Um, which is The Half Life of Molly Pierce by Katrina Leno. I don't know why. I it's like just, cover. I mean, the look on this, do. her face, it just has a lot of emotion to it, and I need to know her story. What do you guys think this one's about? For some reason, my mind goes to drugs. Yeah. I, maybe cocaine, well, like a the look. white and the snow, I don't know. My mind just went there. But what do you guys think this one is about, just based on this cover? Just based on, don't The half-life, and what does half-life mean? What does that mean? Um, does she, I don't even remember. I know I wrote it, but now I don't remember. <laughs> There's so many books. I know. Um, okay, first we'll just have to see what people guess. Okay. La la la. Uh, in Libra's Fairy Toss said, I thought drugs as well. Author Madison said, some government-controlled world probs. <laughs> Book Geek 2872 said, I picture ghosts. Happy Me 123 says a sad story. Yeah. She definitely has a lot of sadness in her eyes. All right. The uh, the blurb says, The half-life of Molly Pierce is a gorgeous, mysterious, and visceral page turner about a 17-year-old girl who unravels the secrets of her alternate personality. So what? she's got an alternate personality. Does she? Does the alternate do drugs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, we will find out. 
and tell you more. Um, anyway. Okay, so which one is your favorite? Um, the other one that, like, grabbed out at me, um, that Did was, it grab you? It grabbed me. Physically? Yes. What? Um, <laughs> is Vivian Divine is dead. Um, oh. there's a lot of beautiful stuff happening on this cover that I'm really excited about. Look, show the close-up. There's, like, this little it day so, of the dead. It reminds me of, um, the, the Nightmare Before, Before Christmas. Christmas. Yes. Mr. Jack. Halloween. Jack. Jack. Yeah. Um, I just really, I like the font. I like everything that's going on on this cover. And it's set in Mexico. So yes. we, we immediately go to Day of the Dead. Yes. Day but it's got like such a cheerful like yes. font. And then it's like, Vivian Divine is dead. Yes. <laughs> also, I think a red cover looks real good sometimes. Do we even have any red covers? No. We have like, it would Adelaide. stand out. It would stand out so much that's, on your shelf. That's the only red cover that we have on like our shelf. But this is like a warm red, and which I, wonder, I really like. Exactly, and I wonder what it will look like in real life. Yeah. Um, it's going to make me want to stroke it. I know, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> stroke me, stroke me. Okay, um, my um, favorite. Your favorite. My favorite is... Don't You Forget About Me by Kate Carius Quinn. Yeah. Um, Don't you well, forget about me. I just think of um, Breakfast Club, right? Um, if anybody read Another Little Piece, which came out this year by Kate Carius Quinn, knows that Kate is a sicko. <laughs> Not really, but she's got a very twisted mind and yes. a twisted writing style, and it's wonderful. And so I can only imagine with the way that this cup will... That the way that this cover looks, like, it looks literally twisty. Yes. And the words are, like, built into the branches of the tree. I can only imagine what this is about, and I'm real pumped for yes. this. What does it say in the tag? Paradise comes at a cost. <sighs> That's good. Also, I really like that her books are um, song lyrics. Don't you forget about, about me. Uh, the Janis Joplin just take another little piece of my heart now, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Open that See? fits. Right? <laughs> See? See? Oh, it all comes together. Um, If you're looking for a scary read or gory God, horror that read, read, that book is called um, This Halloween. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Get it. Um, all right. We're running out of time, man. We're running out of time. We thought this was going to be a short one. I know. We got really excited covers. about covers. Oh. My love missed some cuddles. Mm. So, um, very quickly then, uh, next week is Allegiance. Allegiance week. So, we have a little, um, we're having a little, oh, we're having a little tea party on Wednesday. We're going to do, uh, tea time will be on Spreecast, not on Ustream, because we're going to be inviting people to come on and join our tea party. Um, and, uh, we will have an exclusive video with Veronica. We're hanging out with V-Roth this weekend and we're taping a video on Monday. Um, she wants to come do tea time but uh, obviously it's her release week and she's a very wanted lady and it doesn't work <laughs> out with the time so she's gonna pre-record this video with us. And we will debut the video during tea time. The video is either going to be awesome or really awesome. <laughs> So those are the options. <laughs> we hope. Fingers so don't crossed. miss out. Mark it right now. Next week, 345, Spreecast. Come feel all of your feels about Allegiance. Um, we just got this party box. I, it's not actually a party box, but that's what I'm calling it. I um, like it. It's Ready? a party. Oh, I can't. Party box. I can't. Pop it open. Oh. Ooh. Look, there's party things. Woo, woo, woo. Buttons. See, there's buttons. We're bringing buttons to the party. Um, the world of Allegiant, that uh, little thing. That it's a, thing. It was at Barnes & Noble, I think. I think so. Uh, stickers, your faction, please. And then this behemoth of awesome. Look at this. So we're going to be giving all of this stuff away next week. Can I open this, or is this the actual thing you're giving away? We're going to give those away. I'm just going to open it. If there's a hole Don't in your bag. Look how big this thing is. It's almost... I'm almost... I feel like I could probably hide behind it. It's so big. Ugh. Oh, I could wear this in We're really excited. <laughs> um, we have been eating and breathing Allegiant this week, so we can make sure that we have a fun video with you and Veronica to share. So we're really excited about it. Um, we'll also be doing fun things at her 92nd Street Y with the special guests. 
and um, I know we said that we were going to talk about earlier, um, we tweeted out that we were going to talk about uh, piracy, um, and which is such a much larger discussion, but um, I guess do we want to just like quickly... <laughs> PSA moment. Um, oh, you you may or may not know that people are talking about online versions of the book being out. Not cool people. Not cool. Not Harper cool. is aware of the issue. They're investigating the issue. Um, just piracy is stupid and it supports robbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like people who are stealing things from mm -hmm. people. Um, so don't go on piracy sites. Um, here's the thing. Allegiant comes out in a week. So, like... I get that people are, like, they want to read it and they just, like, can't wait. But, like, the rest of us are waiting. The whole, the part of the fun is knowing that everybody's reading it all at the same time. And you're yes. all freaking out at the same time. Honestly, it's not fun to read a book that no one else has read. Right. Because you literally have no one else to talk to about it. So it's more fun to read a book when everybody's reading it and you can all discuss it. And, and then the whole issue of just, like, piracy is shitty because first of all like there are if you want to read books go to your local library yes there are ways to get access to books that mm -hmm. is not stealing going to the library the, the author is still being supported by you going to the library so go to your library mm -hmm. you'll get the book mm -hmm. please be patient stealing is wrong you can't go to walmart and say i want that tv and just steal the tv <laughs> like that's not it hurts everyone that is involved in making it be um, whether it's the biggest book ever or it's the smallest little book, don't mm -hmm. steal. Also, it. it's um, <laughs> it's alarming how much like book piracy is out there. Like, the, what did we read? In 2010, oh, yeah, the, three billion dollars worth of books were stolen. Were stolen and put up online, and that hurts everybody. It's not just the author. It's like the author and the editor and the publisher and the marketing people and, and the people work at the factory who make the book. Like, there's just so many exactly. people that are hurt by steal. Like, you're hurting I us. I think that you know, in piracy in general, in books, in movies, in TV, it's like you think that you can do it because stealing you're stealing in the corner of your home and you're not in a store, so you don't think that it's stealing, but it's mm -hmm. stealing. Like, well, also, it's just like, do you want more books? Like, do you want Veronica Roth to write more things like then if you want people to write more stuff then stop stealing their stuff <laughs> support the art support the artists support the people who love books like we just got to keep supporting the industry because it's having a hard enough time as it is yes. it competes with movies and TV and book like and video games so I mm. so piracy is the pits yeah. And stop calling it piracy. Call it stealing because it's, it's stealing. stealing. I mean, I know piracy is a word for stealing, but it's, it doesn't seem as harsh as stealing. And it's Steal. not... And even even if you are like, okay, I'm going to go download this book, but I'm going to buy it later, you're still enabling the people who are like... You're supporting... You you're are su supporting it. You're supporting robbers. Yes. You are promoting robbers and say, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Keep robbing people. <laughs> I feel like as an if I was an author... And I knew that uh, my book had been illegally posted online. I feel like it would be the equivalent of something, somebody coming up to me, punching me in the face, and then stealing my bag. Like, yeah. I feel like that's, like, what it feels like. Yeah. You're just like, oh, screw you. <laughs> Taking your shit and going. Um, it sucks. Or your baby. <laughs> it is. It's like your Bo baby. Books are authors' babies. Yeah. So don't be baby stealers. Don't be baby stealers. <laughs> and go to the library and get the book when it comes out. Um, that's all we have to say about So please, that. if you see people on, like, I don't know, just don't don't encourage people. Don't, yeah. don't you know. You know, it's hard. You know what? Uh, waiting for something makes it, what's it, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm -hmm. Like, making it, and part of the wait is what makes it so good and savory. <laughs> Hunger is the best sauce, as Margaret Atwood once wrote. Oh, there you go. So, hunger for reading that book, oh, it's going to be that much sweeter when it actually mm. comes out, and you actually support the author, and you buy the book. Or go to the library. Or go to the library. That's it. Okay. Or wait until it goes on sale for the ebook. Because <laughs> most books eventually go on sale, right? I yeah. mean, with Amazon these days, so... <laughs> Um, that's all we're going to say about that. We know that you guys are awesome. You guys are lovers. Agree. You guys are awesome. You guys awesome, are awesome. But just 
it doesn't hurt to remind people to say that it's, that it's happening. It's happening, and it's because everybody horrible. knows like Napster. You know, everybody yeah. knows that music has been stolen. I mean, that's just it changed the entire music industry. We don't want it to change the book industry. The difference between music and books is with music. If you're um, if you don't buy the song, there are other ways to support the artist by going. Uh, to see them on tour, buying tickets to see them on tour, to buying their merchandise. The uh, artists also make money by selling their music to commercials. Like, they have other ways of making money, whereas authors have their book. And that's about it. <laughs> Don't steal music, though. <laughs> Don't steal I'm not endorsing stealing music. I'm just saying that it's almost like if more and more people start illegally downloading mm -hmm. books, it's like, where are else authors going to turn to? Because where yeah. else are they going to get have yeah. a source of income? So... Don't. So we're just making it aware. PSA. PSA. So um, sometimes yeah. the internet is a bad place. <laughs> sometimes it gives you gold, and sometimes it makes you sad. Yeah. Um, so let's fight to keep. Piracy is the pits. The girls applaud. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, also, yeah, don't download illegal like books because chances are a lot of them are riddled with viruses um also riddled. also you might not be getting the the actual, actual book, book or the finished book or Correct. the right content or the full copy like right you don't know that it's the verified finished thing unless you get it from your library or the bookstore or mm -hmm. you don't know what you're getting with piracy and it's probably going to be a virus probably <laughs> use protection you <laughs> Just kidding. Abstinence. Abstinence <laughs> from piracy. <laughs> um, anyway. So, um, anyway, next week, um, next week is Allegiant Week. We're going to be running around, doing a lot of stuff. We're, We're going to be living our dreams <laughs> next week. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so excited. Um, and we will see you all. We'll see you. We're Stay tuned. Yeah, to give away. We're going to be... We're going to be all over the internet next mm -hmm. week. So you'll see us. And very, very quickly, today's giveaway is paperbacks of delirium we have a bunch of leftover paperbacks we've got 10 of them so 10 of you will be winning a paperback copy of delirium we hashtag will tea time. hashtag tea time we will announce the winners shortly after this after we clean up our mess so uh we will see you guys next week cheers thanks for tuning in <laughs> <laughs> oh we need the backstreet, backstreet boys, backstreet to boys. Um, so just to clarify, next week we will not be on Ustream at our normal time. Yep. We will be at Spreecast. At 3.45 on at Wednesday. At 3.45 on Wednesday. Okay. Um... I wish I knew the dance moves this one. Like, just <laughs> Okay, go on. Just head. Bye, guys.